Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here today? If you are happy to be here, can you wave your hands and give Jesus some thanks today? You know, before you are seated, let me just say very quickly that I have had the chance to travel around the world to many different countries. But this is my first time to Zimbabwe. And I, I must be honest with you, I have discovered two things since I've been here. Can I tell you what I've discovered? Is that okay? The first thing I discovered is that Zimbabwe is a beautiful country. But the second thing I discovered is the people are even more beautiful. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor you're looking good today. You know, I, I must be very honest with you. Is this? Are we going to have an interpreter or no? Do we have a translator or no? Okay, no problem. You can, you can be seated, be seated very quickly. Before I begin today, I want to honor the president and all of the wonderful pastors here. Can we let them know we appreciate them today? Come on, appreciate the pastors, appreciate all of the pastors. You can do better than that. Come on, make some noise. I want to thank you for the honor of sharing this time with you all today. But I, I must be very honest with you. I have listened to some very incredible preachers this week, and it's a little intimidating, and I will tell you why. We have heard some incredible Bible teachers, but I'll be honest, I am a simple evangelist. I, I don't have certificates on my wall like all of you today. In fact, I was very jealous. I'll be honest with you, I didn't do very well at school even. But here's what I love about the Lord. He can take the simple things and He can use them for His glory. You see, friend, listen to me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. You see, friend, here's why I love the gospel. It is simple, yet it is powerful. When you preach the gospel, Heaven rejoices and hell begins to shake. When you preach the gospel, every devil begins to tremble. When you preach about the blood, when you preach about the cross, when you lift Jesus up, he will draw all men to himself. For I've come to tell you, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Shout your hallelujah. Now, I, I will warn you, I understand I have white skin, but I feel a bit of African anointing coming on me when I... I don't know what it is, I feel this Zimbabwe anointing coming on me. I want to preach you for the next few moments. If you have your Bible, go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. Turn there very quickly, Matthew chapter 16. I want you to settle as quickly as you can, please. For those who are still walking, please find your seats. And let us honor the word of God as we turn there. Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to start with verse 13.
The Bible says, please let us be settled for the reading of the word. The Bible says when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said to them, who do you, touch your neighbor and say you. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you Simon Barjona. Listen to this now. For flesh and blood. What does that mean? This was not your intellect, Simon. This was not your logic. This was not your intelligence that figured this out. This was a work of God that revealed who I am to you. But my Father who is in heaven, and I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will. Oh friend, I love that it says I will. He did not say I might. He did not say if your government will allow me. He did not say if people like me. He did not say even if you're against me. He said I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not stand against it. For the next few moments, I want to preach a message to you entitled this, Answer the Question. Answer the Question. You know, friend, I have preached on every continent except one around the world. I have preached in North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and I have discovered something to be true. There are some questions that every person on planet earth is trying to figure out. It does not matter the language you speak. It does not matter the color of your skin. It does not matter your economic position. There are some questions that cannot be avoided. They must be answered. Let me give you some examples. Questions like this. Why am I alive? It doesn't matter who you are, or what country you come from, or what background you have. Every person at some point in their life has to question, why am I alive? Let me give you another one. What happens when I die? That is something that no matter who you are, it affects us all. You can't avoid it. The Bible says it is appointed once for man to die and then the judgment. There is a date on the calendar of heaven that your life will come to an end and you cannot miss that date even if you're always late. That moment will come when your life comes to an end and you will stand before God. Maybe you say, I don't believe you. It does not matter. The Bible says it is so. The Bible says we will all stand before God and give an account of our life. So people, they search for answers to these questions. And you find that one of two things will happen. Either they will run after answers or they will try to avoid the question. But really what they are looking for is something called truth. Do you understand? God designed you to desire truth. The Bible says, you shall know the, and it is the, that will set you free. That means this, without truth, there is no freedom. Do you want to know why people in the world are so bound in chains? They don't know the truth. 
So this pursuit takes place. Searching for answers. People go to witch doctors looking for answers. They go to fortune tellers looking for answers. They go to psychologists looking for answers. But Zimbabwe, I have come to tell you that there is one person who can give you answers. And there is one person who can give you truth. And there is one person that can fill the emptiness in your life. And there is one person who can rescue your soul. And there is one person who can give you meaning. Friend, His name is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of the living God. And today, I unashamedly challenge you with this question. Who do you say Jesus is? See, the Bible says that Jesus was walking with his disciples. Now you have to understand, at this point in the Bible, they had been with him for many years. This was not at the start of Jesus' ministry. They have seen him raise the dead. They have seen him walk on water. They have seen him multiply food. But he stops them one day and he says, I have a question for you. Who do men say I am? Now, I will help you here. Jesus did not ask that question because he was insecure. Jesus was not taking a popularity vote in Jerusalem. He was not wondering, are we doing well in the elections? When Jesus asks a question, it is not for his benefit, it's for yours. Jesus is never uninformed. Who do they say I am? But this question still sweeps the earth today. Men and women searching for answers. Who is this Jesus and why does he matter? He is simply a man in history. Why should I care about this Jesus? You see, I would suggest to you today, friend, that this one question has caused more wars, divisions, and strife than any other question that has ever been asked. But I would also tell you, it has caused more peace, love, and joy than any other question that has ever been asked. What am I telling you? When you are confronted with Jesus, there is no middle ground. He either says you're with us or you're against us. But choose this day who you will serve. There is no middle ground, friend. Maybe you say, I'm thinking about serving Jesus. What are you thinking about? You don't have time. The Bible says that your life is like a vapor. You are here for a moment. You see, friend, people search for who this Jesus is. They try and work out with their logic, who is he? But here is the point, your logic will never discover spiritual matters. This is a work of the Holy Spirit. But throughout history, men have tried to answer this question. How many of you love to study history? Let me see your hand. I want to give you a few quotes from famous people in history who have tried to answer the question, who is Jesus? How many were of a man called Martin Luther King. Let me see your hand. He said these words, Jesus Christ was an extremist for love, truth, and goodness. Napoleon, how many know of Napoleon, the great war leader? He said these words, I know men, but I tell you, Jesus Christ is no average man. Between him and every other person in the world, there is no possible term of comparison. Alexander, Caesar and Charlemagne, we built our empires, but what did we build them upon? We built them upon aggression. 
But Jesus Christ built his empire upon love. And at this very moment, hundreds of millions would give their lives for him. But I must tell you, for everybody that loves Jesus, there will be those who hate him. In fact, Jesus said himself, if the world hated me, they will hate you also. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, said men simply created God in their own image. Thomas Edison, he said this, religion and faith is all but a myth. Thomas Jefferson, the United States president, he said these words, I would question with boldness if God even exists. So you must understand, in life there are always those who will search after him. But there have been those who in history who have said things like this. We will wipe his name off the face of the earth. But I've got news for you. He is still here. See, you have to understand, nations were built upon his precepts. Governments were formed by his wisdom. He is the most spoken about man in all of history. More books have been written about him than anyone who's ever lived. Scholars can't define him. Writers can't describe him. Men cannot remove him. And the question comes, who do you say he is? Are you okay? Now some people would say this. Evangelist, I think Jesus was just a good man. Well, you are partially correct. The Bible says he was a good man. Does the Bible not teach us that he cared for the children? That makes him good. Does the Bible not say that the woman caught in adultery, he forgave her? That makes him good. Does the Bible not say he's loved us with an everlasting love? That makes him good. But I have a problem. Because throughout history, there have been a thousand good men. So what makes Jesus different? Some would say, I think he was just a good teacher. Well, you are also correct, friend. The Bible says he taught in the synagogues. The Bible says he taught the crowds. The Bible says he taught his disciples. But I've got news for you. Throughout history, there have been a thousand teachers. So what makes Jesus different? Now, some would say he was a prophet. You are also correct. He prophesied about nations in Matthew 24. You remember the woman at the well? He gave her a word of knowledge about the husband and the man you're with right now. He's not your husband. He prophesied to her. He prophesies about future events in Matthew 24. But again, I've got news for you. Throughout history, there have been many prophets. So what makes Jesus different? Can I tell you the answer today? Can I tell you the answer today? Yes. Pastor Masambu, I think Zimbabwe might be my favorite place to preach. You see, friend, there have been many people in history who offered the world answers, but they were not the answer. There have been many people who offered the world peace, but they were not peace. There have been many people who offered hope. They were not hope. They offered joy. They were not joy. But when Jesus came, he did not give an answer. He was the answer. You see, when Jesus came, he didn't give healing. He was healing. He was provision. He was peace. He was joy. He was. Oh, there is no one like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. Oh, stay standing, stay standing. Watch this. Only these claims can be made about Jesus. Revelation 22, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the end. John 14, I am the way. He did not say, I know the way.
He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Can I keep going? Can I keep going? John 8, I am the light of the world. John 10, I am the door. John 10, I am the good shepherd. John 6, I am the bread of life. John 15, I am the vine. Do you understand the difference? It's not what he does, it's who he is. See, watch this. If Jesus just did healing, that means it's subject to change. But because he is healing, it will never change. You see, how do you know that? I'm glad you asked. Because he said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he was Moses' deliverer, he is your deliverer. If he raised Lazarus, he can raise you. If he provided for the widow, he can provide for you. It's not what he does. It's who he is. Give God a shout of praise. So he asked this question, who do men say I am? Watch this, watch this, watch this. But then he asked a different question. He said, I know what they say about me. What about you? So listen to me. When it comes to the matter of the soul, Jesus never speaks to crowds, he speaks to individuals. He looked at them and said, I know what they say, but I'm interested, Peter, what do you say? Now, why did he say that? I will give you the answer. Because Jesus knows your neighbor's revelation of me will not sustain you. Because your neighbor knows Jesus intimately, that cannot be imparted. People come and they say, I want what you have with God. And I tell them, I can't give that to you. Because intimacy cannot be imparted. You have to build your own history with God in private. Listen, listen, listen. I keep wanting to come down the stairs because I'm getting excited, but you won't be able to see me. Don't even look at me, look at Jesus. He's far better. He's far better. You see, you cannot come to someone who has walked through hell and ask them, give me what you have paid for. You cannot come to someone and say, impart to me what God has given you. And here is why. They paid a price for it, you have not. But not only that, when they walked through hell, it made them stable enough to carry what God has now given them. Oh, you're not talking to me anymore. See, watch this. When you walk through hell, and when you walk through those valley experiences, you don't come out the same. The Bible says Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit, but he was brought out in the power of the Spirit. Why was that? Because he paid a price while he was there. I said he paid a price while he was there. Some of you right now are saying, I want Reinhard Bonnke's anointing. You've not walked through what he walked through. I want the anointing of Smith Wigglesworth. You've not earned that. Learn to function in your anointing. See, here's the problem. If you always want to be someone else, you'll miss who God called you to be. I've got news for you. We don't need another Billy Graham. We need you. We, I said we need you. We need you. We need you. Brother, we need you. 
We need you. We need you. God is looking tonight in this place. He is looking for individuals who will say yes, yes, yes. Whatever it looks like, yes. See, I am convinced we are in the greatest season of harvest the world has ever seen. And I've got news for you. It's time for you to discover on your own who is Jesus to you. Who is he? I'm not asking if you've heard his name. Who is he? I'm not asking if you've read about him. Who is he to you? Well, my pastor preached about him. I don't care about that. What about you? Friend, let me ask you a question. Every person listening, let me ask you a question. If on Sunday your church was closed, your pastor could not pastor anymore, how long would your relationship with Jesus last? Here's why I ask you that. Because if, please don't be mad with me, I say this in love. I'm saying that now to make sure no one gets upset. Your pastor cannot spiritually babysit you for the rest of your life. Friend, it is time for you to rise up, to know who Jesus is, to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. You have received freely. Give. Listen to me, if every person in this room had a day-to-day -day relationship with Jesus, Zimbabwe would be saved by next week. You see, I don't believe that. Did the Bible not say of the apostles, they turned the world upside down? And I've got news for you. There is nothing they had that you do not have. Except maybe a yes. Why is God not using me like Paul? Maybe he said yes more times than you have. What does that mean? You're going to suffer. I still say yes. You're going to be shipwrecked. I still say yes. They're going to beat you on the temple steps. I still say yes. You're going to be stoned. Yes. You're going to suffer. Yes. You're going to be hungry. Yes. You're going to be hated. Yes. 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 Whatever it costs. Whatever it looks like. God, would you use my life? So listen. If we don't get this right, why do we even gather? No, I'm being really serious. If this book does not make it out of our churches and into the world, what are we doing? I love you, but I came to preach truth to you. The gospel was not designed to work in a church. It was designed to work in the world. That's why Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, it's the sick. Friend, this is the light. Get it out, get it out. Let your light shine for all men to see. See right now, I'm not looking at a crowd of nobodies. I'm looking at a crowd of somebodies. People who are called by God, people who are anointed. You are a somebody. I said, you are a somebody. I said, there is a call on your life. There is a purpose on your life. God has chosen you. He has predestined you before the foundation of the world. When you were in your mother's womb, He wrote all of your days before one of them came to be. But the question comes, who is Jesus to you? listen in this place as I come to a close I'm sharing this session with Pastor Michael and because he's a better preacher than me I want to give him more time <laughs> oh I promise you'll be much more impressed with him than you were with me I promise but listen to me 
Today, this question is unavoidable. And you can never say, I never heard it either, because you heard today. Who do you say Jesus is? Well, he's the God of my pastor, not good enough. My parents serve him, that won't save your soul. I hear him out in the church. Going to church does not mean you'll go to heaven. No, no, let, let me take you further. I know the Bible. So does Satan. Did he not quote scripture to Jesus in the wilderness? Knowing your Bible does not mean you're going to heaven unless you meet the Jesus in the Bible. Maybe say, I know worship songs. That won't save you either. I was baptized as a child. That won't save you either. I'm in the ministry. I'm a little scared about this one. That won't save you either. Can I keep going? Some people are getting happier and happier and some people are getting angrier and angrier. So I'm going to stand with the happy people. <laughs> you say, I've healed the sick. So did Judas. And that didn't go very well for him. What is the point? Jesus makes it very simple. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now let me stop you. Let me stop you. He did not say if you're curious about him. Jesus does not visit curiosity. He visits hunger. This is not an informational meeting to make a decision at a later point. The Bible says, now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week. Right now is the time. So the Bible says, make your election sure. Jesus cannot be a good teacher to you. That won't save your soul. The Bible says, if you confess he is Lord. Do you know what that means? You are no longer in control of your own life. You belong to Him. Now what does that look like? A pure and holy life. Yeah, I still believe in purity and holiness because my Bible says it so. I still believe you should be faithful to your marriage. I still believe you should have integrity. I still believe you should not have sex outside of marriage. I still believe you should not be watching pornography. I still believe you should live consecrated. I still believe you should walk like Jesus. That's not old fashioned, that's Bible. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Is he your Lord? See, some of us think that we can follow Jesus like we follow somebody on Twitter. And I occasionally check in with him. That is not what he died for. The Bible actually says he purchased you with his own blood. So you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Lamb. See, friend, I don't know if you know this. You were bought at a dear price. Can I come down? Is it okay? I don't know if you know this. Heaven went bankrupt for you. I know that you've relegated the scripture to Sunday school, but let me make this simple. God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. That was the best that heaven had. And here's the reality. We did not deserve it. We didn't. We didn't. You say, I'm a good person. No, you're not. I love you, but you're not. Jesus said, no one's good except God. Did Paul not say, I know that within my flesh, there dwells no good thing. See, friend, we have to realize you had nothing to offer God but your sin. That's it. 
I did some good stuff. No, the Bible says that good works like filthy rags. You can feed every homeless person in Zimbabwe. It will not get you into heaven. But he sent his only son. And friend, I go past churches in America. I'm done in two minutes. And I see on a picture of a frail white man with a tiny little drop of blood on his cheek. That's not how it looked. They took my Jesus. The Bible says they arrested him in the garden. And they took him to the house of Caiaphas. And there the man who was truth was lied about. Think of the pride of humanity. We lied about the only one who was truth. And then the Bible says they took their hands and they beat the face of Jesus. They spat upon him. They mocked him and beat him until the Bible says he was unrecognizable. Can you imagine? The face of the Son of God bruised and bleeding and swollen. This face, the second Corinthians says, the glory of God is found in the face of Jesus. That same face humanity beat. They sent him to Pilate. And there they had him whipped and whipped and whipped until the Bible says his back looked like a plowed field. He said, Jordan, this is too much. No, I need you to know how valuable you were to Jesus. Friend, his body was torn to pieces so that you could be made whole. Blood flowed from his body as if that was not enough. They took thorns and they buried them into his brow. Can you imagine what God the Father was thinking? Friend, listen to this. Look at me. Look at me. Can you imagine God the Father? One day he formed a baby in a womb. He formed that baby's little hands, brother. And he knew one day those hands will nail my son's hands to a cross. But he still made him. No, no, let me, let, hold on. Let me take it further. One day God the Father saw a seed in the ground. And it would grow up to become a tree. But it would be the tree that his son would be nailed to. But he let it grow. There Jesus carries the cross through the streets no one to help him weak disciples who said we'll never leave you where are they now in his hour of pain in his hour of agony where are they now the son of God struggling carrying his cross that would pay for your sin and my sin. But the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was that joy? It was you. And it was me. Knowing that one day we could be saved. And there, they laid him on the cross on Mount Calvary. They took the hands that formed your very body. And they nailed them into the cross. They took the feet that walked on water and they nailed them into the cross. And there Jesus was lifted up. Alone, beaten, unrecognizable, carrying your sin and carrying my sin. Because the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin for us. That in return, you could be called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There on the cross, Jesus breathed his last. He gave up his life. 
And they buried him in a tomb. But I've got news for you. Jesus did not take a three-day vacation. He got business done. Oh, I might dance. I'm, I might dance. The Bible says, he who ascended first descended. What did he do? See, I've heard that there was, I heard there was this fight with the devil. I've got news. There was no fight. There was no fight. Let me tell you how it went. There was a little demon looking after the door of hell one day. And he hears some footsteps. And he peeks through the hole. And there was Jesus. He did not knock. He kicked the front door down of hell. He marched in there and he said, Devil, give me the keys of death and hell. There was no fight. There was no wrestle. He took those keys and the Bible says he made an open spectacle of the devil. The Bible then says he led captivity captive. Those who were there, he took them out with him and he ascended into heaven and he was given a name far above. Every other name that had the name of Jesus. Every knee. Every knee. I said every knee. I said every knee. Every knee will bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue will confess he is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. And I've got news for you. That's not where the gospel ends. He is coming back again. So I ask you the question, who do you say Jesus is? I want every eye closed right now in this place, every eye closed. Can you be standing to your feet? I ask you respectfully. Can we be upstanding? Pastor Michael, will you come? Please, can we, can we have quiet just for the next 30 seconds? For the next 30 seconds, I don't want you talking to your neighbor. Your neighbor can't save you. Also, do not distract them from this holy moment. See, the Bible makes it very simple. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. But if you accept me before men, I will accept you before my Father. See, I love you enough today to tell truth to you. Some people would tell me, Jordan, preaching on hell is not a good idea. But it was Jesus' idea. See, whether you don't believe in hell or not, it doesn't matter because the Bible says it is still there. Our theologies do not determine the Bible. The Bible determines our theologies. The Bible says... The wages of sin is death. Let me make this very clear to you. That means hell. It's a real place. And people are going there. Why? Someone asked me once. They said, if God is so loving, why is he sending people to hell? And I told them this. God is sending no one. People are willingly choosing to go. And here's why. Here's why. Watch this. We were going to hell anyway. Jesus was the only one who jumped in to try and save you from hell. So if anything, you're sending yourself by not accepting him. That's in your Bible. Don't be upset with me. So today, I'm not really interested if you've been in church for 50 years. That doesn't mean you're saved. Let me tell you why. If I walk into Zimbabwe, does that make me a Zimbabwean? Then neither does walking into church make you a Christian. You have to choose. 
I said, you have to choose. Every eye closed right now, if you will. I'm talking to you today, and I'm going to make this very clear, because I love you. If I did not love you, I would preach a compromised gospel, and I will not do that. If there is sin in your life, you need Jesus. So today, listen to me. Today, my question is very simple. Friend, my question is simple. Have you given your life to Jesus? I'm not asking if you've heard about him. I'm asking, have you made him the Lord of your life? Have you looked upon the cross and have you beheld the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Friend, today I've come to preach a simple message. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And it is His will that you should not perish, but you would have eternal life. Listen to me today. I do not care if you're married to a minister. If there's sin in your life, you need Jesus. Being a minister does not mean you're immune to sin. Say, I'm a pastor of a church. That doesn't mean you're immune either. And I know that's kind of dangerous to say, but again, I love you. You say, I'm a bishop over many churches. That won't save you either. Are you living for Jesus? Is he Lord of your life? The Bible says, he who sins is a slave to sin. That sin will mark those robes. As Revelation says, you have defiled your robes. And I've got news for you. There is only one thing strong enough to remove those stains. It is the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus. So today, listen to me carefully. Listen carefully. If I'm talking to you today, you say, Jordan, I need to get right with Jesus. There's sin in my life and no one knows. Every young person, I'm talking to you. If you are bound by lust, Sleeping around outside of marriage, you need Jesus today. If you struggle with alcohol, you need Jesus. If you mistreat your wife, you need Jesus. If you break your marriage vows, you need Jesus. If you've got pride, you need Jesus. If you've got unforgiveness, you need Jesus. If there is sin in your life, you need Jesus. So today I'm talking to every person in this great, ama amazing meeting. And I'm going to ask you right now, if you know I'm talking to you, no one else knows, but in your life there is secret sin. I've got news, it is not secret at all. Jesus sees all of it. Yet he still wants to forgive you. So friend, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, if you say, I need to repent of my sin, Jordan. I need to make it right. I don't want to go to hell. I want to know that I know that I know when I die, I am going to be with Jesus. If that is you, when I get to three, I want to lift your hand. Do it unashamedly. Do not care what people around you think. If that is you, you want to give your life to Jesus today, I want to lift your hand. One, two, three. Lift your hand now if that is you all over this place. Lift it high, lift it high, lift it high all over this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lift it high, lift it high, lift it high. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thousands of people are lifting their hands right now. Lift it high as you can. Wave those hands in the air. Thank you, Jesus. Friend, I'm waiting for you. Come on. If that is you today, if you need to get right with Jesus, lift your hand high. Lift it high. Don't be ashamed. Keep your hands up. I see you all the way on the hill there. God bless you. If that is you, lift those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray a prayer right now, and I want you to pray this prayer with me. People say, can I pray in my heart? No, you can't. Because the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth. Now, why is that? Because the Bible says, life and death are in the power of your tongue. Today, choose life. Pray with every person. Every person in this great meeting, pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. Okay, some of you decided not to pray. Help me this time. Lord Jesus. I come to you today. And I ask that you would forgive me of all of my sin. Jesus, I recognize I cannot save myself. I am in need of a Savior. I believe you are the Son of God. You came to the earth. 
You lived a perfect life. You died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sin. You were buried in a tomb. But three days later, you rose again. Today, Jesus, I ask that you would save me. Wash me in the blood. Cleanse me of my sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can you give a mighty shout of praise?